Oh, hey guys. This is the Flat Out Fever podcast. For real this week. For real. For real. Because Jay has some sort of fever like symptoms. The Zika virus, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jay. We love you. <laughs> you might be pregnant. With a I always Zika, thought Zika so. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Name him after me, man. All right. Well, uh, thanks again for watching, guys. Uh, we're here live. It's um, yeah. the 9th of February 2016. It and uh, we got some we got some things to talk about. Yes, we do. Formula One related. Um, I think we thought, well, we didn't think we thought. <laughs> <laughs> we thought this week uh, for the Redditors... A post got popular, title, I'm new to F1, after reading the sidebar, I still have a few questions about things. I've been following Formula 1 for about a year now, and I always have questions. Have lots also, of questions. Like, what the fuck's going on in this so, sport? This is a perfect timing. Perfect. T- uh, testing is coming up in uh, two weeks or so, two mm-hmm. and a half, three weeks. And uh, let's, may I guess, review the teams. Let's go through them. The engines, the drivers. Because it seems that every year there's another team or one less team or a different engine for a different other team. There's, <laughs> there's been, always something going on. It's been quite a few shuffles. Quite a few shuffles for 2016. And uh, let's look at them. What do you want? You want to start from the top and work uh, down? Well, let's, let's start from last year's winner. Let's start. I guess Mercedes would be Mercedes. A, a, okay, a good Okay, so we'll start at the top. So Mercedes. So I guess Mike's gonna pull up some pictures of the teams, the Let's drivers. Do it. And we'll talk about what they're doing. So Mercedes has been dominating since the engine change in twenty fourteen. They uh I guess they left the sport like way back nineteen fifties. Yeah, like what's kind of like their history? I guess the, so the the fifties they, they stopped and then they just kind of they're like Actually, we like Formula One. Let's get back into it. Well, they came back because they liked the idea of the formula change. We went to this hybrid, turbocharged, oh, okay. battery power, energy harnessing system. Okay. Since since the change, Mercedes has dominated everybody, basically. And uh, I guess a lot of it has to do with Mercedes itself as an auto manufacturer. Mm-hmm. They've been sort of leading with their uh, blue tech cars. Right. Well, they're they're, they're more so um, about uh, like luxury cars and stuff like that, like Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. Like they're, they're, but they're nice. They're, they're Blue Tech, B L U T E C. Okay, that's their sort of hybrid division. They're efficient cars, battery power, energy harvesting. So we got a bunch of pictures up here, and the drivers for this team are obviously Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. Yeah, they haven't changed. Nico Been talking about me. these guys a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Nico's hit me. Nico's hit me. <laughs> Both of them, I guess, sort of been in the news this week. We were talking about Rosberg last week. Right. That uh, his sort of uh, cheerleader, uh, Berger, Ger- Gerhard Berger, <laughs> <laughs> he says he's, he's pretty sure Nico can still win, still smash Hamilton. Yeah. But only if he gets under his skin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm basically like poke him behind and bother him. Whereas uh, Hamilton... He's set to become one of the highest paid athletes in any sport in uh, the entire world this year. Really? In the top five-ish. Holy like top shit. Top four, top five. How much is he getting paid now? Or was he getting paid? He was in the 20s of millions, I believe. But now he's stepped up like to the 50s of millions. That's unreasonable. I forget the exact number. Yeah, wow. It's, it's crazy. And wow. he negotiated it himself. And then- so he fired his dad. <laughs> <laughs> his dad, dad. <laughs> yeah, his dad was his manager since he was like six years old. Oh my god! Something he fired his dad last year. He's like, I have my own, and my own man. How much is uh, Rosberg being paid? Uh, that I don't know. See if you can find actually maybe the salaries for 2015. Yeah. I think most of them have sort of leaked or been guessed. But uh, yeah, Hamilton's going to be one of the highest paid. He was sort of in the news this week too, with some headlines of. Uh, Hamilton's going to dominate the sport for the next seven to ten years, blah, blah, blah. This quote was floating around. But what I think most people missed is that quote came from his father. 
Ooh. It was an interview with his dad. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, let's see here. Uh, Rosberg, right there. Combined $55 million across three years. So that was his deal, 2015 to 2017. Oh, my so God. So he'll be renegotiating this year. $55 million for three years. So, you know, close to $20 million a year. But who knows? A lot of these but deals... But that salary, I guess, would mean like he's sort of like the the second... Like he's the... I don't know. I think this year, I think Alonso was the highest paid. See, it looked 40 million a year. Oh, there you go. Vettel, 50 million guaranteed first year. And then 30 million plus bonuses after for his My Ferrari God. deal. That's his Ferrari deal. Oh, He is also four-time world champion. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good. He's four-time <laughs> world champion. Yeah, back to Mercedes. Yeah. Anyway, since 2014, they came in with the hybrid knowledge, dominated everyone. They won... I think 33 out of on two consecutive driver's titles with Mercedes. And uh, Mercedes won the two consecutive for the past 38 races since they've been back. Hamilton's won most of those. He's won constructor's titles. They seem a little more scared this year because Ferrari's hot on their heels. They were the number two team last year. So I guess we'll move on a little bit. Yeah. The two drivers... Sebastian Vettel and Nico Rosberg. Um, oh, sorry, that's why not Nico Rosberg. <laughs> Kimi Raikkonen. Um, the Iceman? The Iceman. There that he was going to lose his seat. There was uncertainty. He didn't actually perform too well in the middle of this past year. Didn't qualify a few times. Rumors towards the middle. Yeah, because when you think of Ferrari, you think of someone that's like... Dominating. You're, yeah, dominating, but like he didn't really see that. What what what, what uh, placement did he get by the end of uh, last year's season? Oh, it's so hard to remember. Yeah, <laughs> there's too <laughs> too many numbers. In fact, you can find the chart too. Yeah, let me let me look it up. But uh, I think 2014 that was Ferrari's first winless year since '93. Oh my God, We're going way way back. And their their aim for 2015 was two wins. They got three. They got up on the podium. Yeah. They got up on the podium three times. So, I don't know. I think Mercedes, they, well, they've stated publicly. Reckoning came in fourth. Fourth place. All right. You got a little bit of fear coming out of Ferrari this year, especially since we have sort of uh, touched a few weeks ago on their accusations, I guess is the word, of stealing or hiring away for extra money the right. mercedes engineers yeah some of their top engineers uh as well as the scandal of one of the guys uh left with a thumb drive full of data <laughs> remember you tried, <laughs> tried to steal some stuff so two again two of the highest paid drivers i think part of um kimmy's deal the ice man midway through the year is maybe what some people think affected vettel the year before was his baby he had a baby he's got a baby well that that changes the person right? i think it changes everyone yeah 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 so vettel had a horrible year his last year at red bull got yeah. got beaten by his rookie teammate Ugh. you know what i mean because he had a baby yeah. i think that's what it was it's like well i don't want to die yeah right and leave this kid with millions and millions of dollars so that's ferrari <laughs> ferrari <laughs> that's right For, ferrari's come back we went in a bit of details last week with their uh, engine reshuffle. They moved some parts mm -hmm. around, split the intercooler for the turbo. You know, taking some Mercedes cues, I assume. And um, I don't know. I think some of the teams are scared of them this year. Yeah. Let's see what they can do. Uh, Williams, third place last year. Uh, kind of like a middle of the pack. Top of the middle of the pack. Top of the top of the midfield teams. They're not a factory team, so mm -hmm. they're the top non-factory team. What do you mean factory team? So they don't make their own engine. Ah, uh, okay. Whereas you know Mercedes, Ferrari, Ferrari, Renault, yeah, factory teams, and Honda, McLaren, right, are a works team. They're not. They're vehicle man two two vehicle manufacturers, but mm -hmm. Honda's not making the car. McLaren's not making the engine. That's kind of weird. Two car companies, and they're just like, nah. Yeah, double put their brains together. So, yeah, Williams is uh, Sorry, British. Uh, who's uh, Williams's um, engine? Uh, they are going to be running Mercedes this year. This year and last year, they did. 
Mercedes also. Oh, okay. So they're, I guess you could call them a family team. Mm -hmm. Sir Frank Williams, uh, knighted Brit. Uh, he's, uh, he's been running the team since, geez, I don't know, the mid-80s, I guess. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of success back then with a Honda Engine. And uh, Frank Williams is super old now, but his daughter he's managed to keep it in the family. His daughter, Claire Williams, team principal, and uh, managed to keep the team running at the front. It's uh, power. What, what's that? Power. Oh yeah, yeah. She looks like she could run something. Yeah, look at her face. Pull her face up. <laughs> yeah, she that. looks like uh, a boss. <laughs> yeah, got the out. boss hair boss haircut that's it that's it she takes no shit from no one yeah two drivers they have uh felipe massa will be driving again this year who's uh he comes back from the ferrari days he was alonso's teammate back at ferrari been with um be been with williams now since 2014 they'll be his third year and valtteri bottas is a much younger driver uh, also been with Williams since 2014. Bring up his face. Yeah, there he is. Whoa, look at that guy. And uh, <laughs> I guess you wouldn't call him a, a rookie anymore, but not exactly a vet either, but he's give, been giving Massa some Seasoned. runs for his money. Sorry? Seasoned? Yeah, I guess this is his third year. Third year in F1. Third year with uh, with Williams. And uh, I don't know. We'll see how they do. He did. He had some bad luck last year. Mm -hmm. He was taken out twice, I guess, by Ferrari. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. Not oh, good. man. Yeah, knocked out. Um, I don't know. I think good things to come from these guys this year, especially mm -hmm. at the end of the year. They made a step up and uh, sort of they sort of promised yeah, to yeah, continue totally. that. Yeah. Next up, next team, Red Bull Racing stepped down they were the four year in a row champions mm -hmm. and then what happened they just uh renault sort of fell off when the when the engine formula changed oh so they right. were at the at the end four years in a row they dominated the v8 mm -hmm. the v8 engine and uh when they switched to the turbo renault renault sort of fell off so this year again they get the the two dannys the two dannys daniel kviat and Daniel Ricciardo, oh my God. the Australian. So they're actually powered by Tag Heuer this year. Tag Heuer. <laughs> the rebranded Renault engine, which, uh, as we now know, is the exact same engine as the Renault engine. <coughs> same engine, same hardware, same software, same everything except for the sticker. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, their chassis is strong. They they managed to challenge at some of the uh, less power intensive tracks l last year, but I don't know. I think them like Renault, not expecting a lot this year, but I guess just trying to make a step this year to mm -hmm. challenge challenge going forward. So I don't know. I guess we'll have to really was, wait and see. Was Red Bull the last team? Uh, to win a championship that wasn't a factory uh, team? Uh, yeah, because yeah, because Mercedes has won the last two years. Right. So up till 2013, they were winning 2000. I think it was uh, 9, no, 10, 11, 12, and 13. They won four years in a row. Holy shit. <laughs> that, that kind of <laughs> blows my mind, actually, but, that a, a non-factory team would... Ha would be su have such a commanding lead but it's kind of weird because there was no Renault factory team for those few years Renault stepped back oh really yeah they, I think in 08 08 they stepped out of the sport so Red Bull sort of was their factory team it uh, was their focus their focus team anyways they, oh I they see okay. kind of like how Honda McLaren is now okay more or less okay so uh, and also there was Infinity Red Bull and uh, Infinity is a Nissan uh, Nissan brand which is partnered with Renault mm. in the car manufacturing world. But so Ren Renault's coming coming back this year with their own team, which is Red Bull talked a lot of shit about Renault last year. So which is sort of how the Tag Heuer deal came around. <laughs> but 
I know this, that happens a lot in this sport. It's yeah, just, people like a the, lot of shit talking. And a lot of drama, not a lot of action. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Red Bull, I don't think they're expecting a lot this year. Publicly, they've stated they probably are expecting to take a step backwards in performance this year. Transitioning. I don't know. So I guess we'll have to see. Next team up, uh, let's talk about Renault since we're on the on the subject. Yeah. Um, Lotus last year, a lot of financial trouble, mm-hmm. even with um, Maldonado's money, which sort of disappeared as well because Venezuela as a country is very close to collapse. Yeah. Financial collapse. Pastor Maldonado is from there. Their state-owned oil, oil company was his backer <laughs> to the tune of something like fifty million dollars a year, oh, good Lord. which has sort of disappeared now. He lost his seat. Lotus uh, couldn't even move their equipment from a few tracks. Like there was uh, one race, Bernie Ecclestone uh, bought them lunch because the team had no lunch, no catering was there to, oh to feed their team. <laughs> <laughs> so the Lotus, Lotus, I guess Lotus is really known as the Endstone team. Okay from Enstone in Britain. But they've changed hands back from Genai Capital, which is a financial company that right. owned the team in the background, sold the team back to Renault. We heard for one dollar. What? Yeah, who knows what the real deal is, but that yeah. was their, their public public amount. It's like some sort of prices right shit. It's <laughs> just like, yeah, a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> so they put their, their money on two new drivers for this year, Maldonados out um Jolion Palmer was a British driver 2014 GP2 champion mm. he was world champion in GP2 which is it's pretty good. the series below right below yeah. Formula One he will be racing this year he's actually very tall oh, very really? tall guy what's his name sorry Jolion Palmer I'm not gonna say Jay- <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not Julian. And I hear <laughs> I was Shit. talking about this with Jay the other day actually. It must be annoying with it to the, be this guy being called probably Jolene his whole life. Yeah. It's J O L Y O N. Jolion. Oh, what a weird name. Y O N. It's Oops. A little more odd because he's British. It's not a not really it doesn't sound like a British name. Man, my nose is itchy. And uh, it's the birthday itches. <laughs> oh yeah, it's your birthday. Today. I uh, I'm goddamn thirty years old. <laughs> thirty years old. Right on. Sorry right for right on. Years. <laughs> too old. Is this too old. Yeah, that's the dude. He's got a race seat. And as we went into some big details last week, um Kevin Magnuson. He is also contracted to drive for Renault. Right, we talked about him last time, right? Right. So the Renault car launched this past week as well, their new vehicle. But after the huge launch event, we can pull that up too. Oh, yeah, right. After the huge launch event, they showed us beautiful looking uh, so Renault which one, which all in black. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, it's Renault. called the RS16. So I think the, the team has changed its name from Lotus to Renault Sport F1, I believe is their new official official team name. Oh. So anyone, but you were, yeah, anyone you were saying this is not it. Sorry? This is not it. This is this won't be it. Yeah, I was exactly. like, this is it. Ah, just kidding. Ah, yeah, for for the people watching or the people that aren't, Google the car. But a day or two after this big launch, they did this online. Uh, Carlos Ghosn is there, who's the CEO of Renault, not just the F1. Um, Cyril Abitibul is there, who is the so Renault Sport team leader, I guess. The, he's in charge of the engine last year. He had to deal with all that Red Bull mm-hmm. bullshit talk. A day, anyways, a day or two after they launched this car and livery and sponsors and drivers, this huge event online, yeah. they said, oh, yeah, by the way, that's not actually the RS-16. <laughs> this isn't the car you'll be seeing on track, nor is that our livery. <laughs> the car won't be black. It might not have any yellow on it. I like this car a lot. It does look very cool. Yeah. But I think it's kind of probably they want to step away more from what lotus was right because they they were like a black and gold black and gold yeah right okay this this is black and yellow uh like a bumblebee some argument i heard at first was that they painted it black just to kind of uh hide the curves a bit from the camera and you can see the engine cover is not even painted it's just flat black which one the back part 
Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not. They didn't even paint it. It's just either. I can't. It's hard to tell from the picture if it's flat black or just plain carbon fiber. Yeah. But. Oh, I think I see what you see. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. At first, the rumor was that they it's painted here. Yeah, that they painted it black just to kind of hide the contours and uh, not give away too much before testing, but. The next day they said, yeah, this isn't our car at all. <laughs> this is like, ah, nah. Yeah, so I guess they, maybe they ran out of uh, whatever the shiny stuff is they mix in the paint. I don't know. But them themselves have come out and said, you know, we're making some progress on the engine. We can focus now. We're building yeah. this for ourselves. Oh, wow. We've got Red Bull to help us develop. We're going to be putting a very competitive budget in to this engine. Sorry, guys. And... They also said don't expect them to be anywhere near the top until after 2017. <laughs> so the thing is they've switched their car and chassis is not changing a lot, but they have switched engine. So they have to deal with putting the new engine, a Renault engine, in a car that was Mercedes powered last year. Right. So I don't know. It's, now, it's, is that it's so a, up in the air. Is that so, like such a big difference? Like... Uh like in terms of like the size and dimensions of others' engines, like a Ferrari engine versus a Mercedes engine, versus whatever these guys got. I think let, let's come back to this. Okay, because that let's, seems. I want to do okay. a s- little separate segment today because a lot of actually a lot of info is leaked about a lot of the engines, but I think at least in dimension that the Renault and the Mercedes engine are the closest to each other. Oh, okay. In overall dimension. Okay. Um. Okay, we're getting towards closer to the bottom of the pack, I guess. Okay. I don't know. Let's look at Force India. All right, cool. We also looked pretty deep at these guys about two weeks ago because there was uh, some big news that one of their financial backers is in jail. Oh, yeah, that's right. Some sort of (laughs) land deal pyramid scheme that he's tried to pull off in India. He owes a shitload of money. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. I could look back quickly at my notes and yeah. find it. But basically, he had owned him and the other owner. Um, yeah, pull him up for a second. Let's just do owner here. Yeah. Let's just look at this guy. Sorry for a second. Yeah, Sorry for a second. He looks like a boss. He does. Find, find a picture of him with the mohawk. <laughs> Anyways, they both own about 47% <laughs> of the team. But the Sahara owner... This is where the, the, the team name Sahara, the, the Sahara owner is in jail. He's being forced to give up his his oh, that's ownership right. in the team to pay back a lot of the money he owes. He's bankrupt and I don't know. I, th- I think he's in the hundreds of millions of dollars in the hole, which I don't know. There was a good spot to be in. <laughs> yeah, this team's had a lot of bad bad luck. They, they're, they're mentioning that... Uh, they were going to have an Aston Martin sponsorship this year. The team might have been Aston Martin powered or named, but they backed out early. It's funny because they, the 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 2015 uh, driver standings, they they were middle of the pack, pretty yeah. pretty high up actually. They made a huge step forward this past year, and especially Fifth, I guess, yeah, especially Sergio Perez. Yeah, uh, he seemed extremely comfortable, especially towards the end of the year. He's sort of. Come into his own. I can't find the guy's name. Doesn't matter. He's the owner of Sahara. He's in jail. Seems like an asshole. And I think a lot of oh, yeah. Indian people hate him now for uh, partially ruining their country, I guess, the <laughs> finances of their country. The two drivers, the other one, of course, Nico Hulkenberg. Uh, he finished 10th in the standings last year and uh, also won the Le Mans 24 hour race. He won it. Yeah, he was one of the winners. Wow. But this year, there's been some controversy that the Azerbaijan European Grand Prix in Baku yeah. is going to overlap with the Le Mans 24 hours. Right, we talked about that last time. Right. And when you really look at it, Formula One, Bernie, and the European Grand Prix organization group did it on purpose to make sure that some of the F1 drivers could not compete there. Oh, wow. Because it takes away attention from the race. It's It's petty. Yeah. This is what billionaires do, though. Ugh. Yeah, it's pretty Gross. shitty. Yeah, so a lot of people are mad and just saying yeah. they're going to watch the Le Mans 24 hours out of spite. <laughs> but it's like, I think it's the qualifying of... The race is so long, it's 24 hours. Right. The qualifying of 
the Formula One European Grand Prix yeah. overlaps with the start, the green flag of the Le Mans 24 hours, and the end of the race the next day, which has been moved to a sunset race to yeah, light right. the track. The end of the race the next day is going to end overlapping with the checkered flag of the Le Mans 24 hour day, race. Oh my God. Yeah, so they make qualifying overlaps the start. <sighs> The race overlaps the end. Some petty shit going on here. Yeah, it's kind of dumb. And Sergio Perez, like we just said, he uh, he had a great year. Got a lot of press himself. Mexican Grand Prix gave him a huge boost. It was great for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great. He finished actually ahead, ninth ninth place, yeah. twenty fifteen. And uh, I don't know, Force India just I don't know, keeping their heads down this year. Yeah. As far as the media so far, anyways. Yeah, you don't really hear much from them. Yeah, I think they have some financial trouble. As strong as their driver lineup is, I think they're just hoping they can pull some performance. They got some interesting place. color choices. I guess it's yeah. They've actually changed changed their colors quite a few times oh, in the really? past few years. But yeah, the, the Indian colors: the uh, yeah. white, white, green, and orange. Cool. Yeah, so I, 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 I dig it. I dig it. Yeah, I've been behind this team. Oh, 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 scroll down a little bit. There's a great picture right there. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little. Right there. There we go. That's, That's a hairdo. <laughs> oh, yeah. VJ, with the, the ponytail and the mohawk. <laughs> oh, man. <gasps> VJ Malia. Sorry, his, his name had his name had slipped my mind. Oh, that's hilarious. He's Mr. Kingfisher. <laughs> uh, Toro Rosso. Toro Rosso this year. Um... I guess they're in, I think they've been maybe the least in the media of any team mm-hmm. so far this year. Coming going yeah, going into the year. Uh they're gonna be powered by Ferrari this year. Interesting. But the twenty fifteen Ferrari. The tw- oh the old one. Yeah, last year's. What is sorry, what's so, their relationship again with Red Bull? Uh they're same owners. Oh really? They're Italian based. So Toro Rosso uh, is a Red Bull in Italian. <laughs> toro Toro, that's a, that's that's the bull, and Rosso is the color red. Oh, funny. So they are the Italian-based Red Bull team, owned by the same owners. I guess it makes sense they would go with the Ferrari then. Yeah, um, I guess sort of somewhat genius, somewhat devious. Even though there's FIA is fairly strict on sharing data and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's changed a bunch of times between Red Bull and the Toro Rosso, but they've changed the engines as teams. Toro Rosso more than Red Bull, but a lot of people think or speculate anyway that Red Bull with Toro Rosso, their sister team using a different engine, allows them to sort of look at both. Yeah. They look really close at the yeah. other engines. <laughs> so it's going to, I don't know, people are thinking maybe Renault is going to get some stuff off the 2015 Ferrari. But as we said earlier and last week, Ferrari's expected to come back with a almost completely different engine this mm-hmm. year. So who knows what they could glean from that, uh, from their old design. But these guys are most likely going to be midfield. They have a strong chassis, mm-hmm. but who knows? Max Verstappen, the 17 year old, the 18 year old. He's 18 now. He's 18 now. He's 18 now. Oh my god. He uh he actually came in 12th last year. He uh yeah. I don't wow. know, he he did very well. His teammate came in 15th, Carlos Sainz. And uh yeah, I don't know, his, I don't know, Max Verstappen probably the guy with the most promise. Mm-hmm. He's got the longest career in front of him as yeah. well. He's 18 years old. <laughs> Just crazy. A lot of guys are still in go-karts or yeah. the the mid mid-level series at that age. Yeah, it's really crazy. Um, Manor, Manor Marusha. Well, I think the uh, Marusha has totally been dropped this year from the title. Oh, really? They sort of, I don't know. I think, I don't know. They might race on TV as MRT or something we talked about last week. Yeah. Or at least that's what they're calling their car. Some oh, news is the Airbnb guys. That's the Airbnb right. guys, right? If if you look the picture beside it, that's how they started the 2015 season with zero sponsors, Ugh. orange and white car. By the end of the year, they had a handful of sponsors and so, a disclaimer text. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the iTunes uh, 
copyright and disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Something interesting. They've had quite a few shuffles with, uh, we talked about the two top guys from the team had left a few yeah. weeks ago and stuff. But some big news coming out of them. This year, they're going to be powered by a Mercedes engine. Oh, wow. Which should uh, probably boost them up a few places if they and could get the power sorry, on the road. Who who were they? Who was their engine before that? Uh, they were running... Uh, man, too, too many details. <laughs> so sorry, man. <laughs> oh, no, no, I need to apologize. They were running... Oh, my God. I don't know, man. You got you to look it up. Will do. They, I don't know. These are the guys, though. They had a death. Gio Bianchi died in, oh, that's right. in their car. Some positive news this week, though. They've started an endurance racing team. So they're going to be competing in the uh, endurance races, the 6, 12, and 24-hour races. They've changed their logo big time. This is their new Marusha Mana Racing logo. Kind of looks like uh, th- this one on the left here. They got a flower now. The left kind of looks like a cobra or something, yeah. like a snake M, I guess. They got rid of those little wings coming off the team. But, uh, or sorry. <clears throat> There's a logo. This one here? Man, they've changed it so many times. They've changed the name of the team. It was Marusha, then Manor Marusha. Now it's Manor. It's a bit crazy. Well, hopefully they can get some stability going, I guess, for themselves. Because it, it has been crazy. The Their lineup, too, is not locked down. Um, Roberto Merhi, who drove quite a few races for them last year, uh, pff, he finished 19th in the standings, didn't race the last few races, and was, excuse, excuse me, his last few races were replaced. He was replaced by Alexander Rossi, the mm-hmm. American. Yeah. Which a lot of people were hoping Alexander Rossi, the American, was going to race for Haas, the mm. American team. But uh, he's still rumored. Manor actually hasn't announced any of their drivers for this year. Uh oh. But Pascal Verline, um, another promising young driver, I guess you'd call him, also rumored. Stoffel Van Dorn, also rumored. He was actually the GP2 champion last year mm. for 2015. And. Probably one of the strongest ru- rumors was uh, fourth place GP2 finisher last year, Rio Harianto, the Indonesian guy. He has his country's government behind him and I think would make him the first Muslim Formula One driver. Oh, crazy. That, that matters. But he's, he's, he's Indonesian. It's between these four guys, though. So I guess it's going to come down to the wire. There's only two weeks left, really, to lock the seats down. I guess mm-hmm. the... The uh, the deadline for them is the first oh, pra- you, the you, first practice. But you have to lock in your drivers for the for the year. Well, no, not really. But they w- they want you they want to the drivers want to. Well, anyways. Okay, yeah, yeah. You don't want to have and for the team it makes sense to have consistency, right? You have a guy that is sitting in the car, used to it, yeah, used to the team, used to everybody. Right. Okay. So. I guess the four drivers are the strongest. Rio Harianto, again, Alexander Rossi, the American, Pascal Verlein, and Stoffel Van Dorn, who was the champion in GP2. He seems like a strong contender. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for some reason, I guess because of all their shuffling, there's. if you go to their website too, actually, the Manor site, there's almost nothing there. So I guess they've been busy. They've been busy. And finally, Haas, Haas F1. Mm-hmm. <sighs> The new American team. H-A-A-S. H-A-A-S, yes. Uh, They raced in American racing sports for a long time. Proved themselves. Haas Automation is a huge, huge company that makes... um, uh, What's it called? Metal machining tools. Like a tool and die sort of thing? Tool and die machines, yeah. Metal forming machines. Some of the best in the world some of the most precise they actually power now i believe the ferrari factory all the machines are haas oh crazy and ferrari powers haas they've sort of it's a symbiotic relationship yeah they've (laughs) sort of um i guess it exploited the rules in a way but haas has partnered with ferrari and every part that is possible and legal for them to take to use for themselves has been 
taken and used for themselves. Whoa. Their engine, uh, they'll be running. They'll be running the new engine and basically everything possible. It's almost like a partnership. Um, two drivers have experience. Romain Romain Grosha. He's been his first year in F one. He got a lot of criticism. He was like, uh, I don't know. You'd, you'd almost call him like a mini pastor. Oh, really? he almost killed <laughs> Fernando Alonso. <laughs> He caught, he caught oh, a few accidents. Oh, is that when he almost got hit in the head? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was a bad crash what for anyone an that wants to look it up. <laughs> uh, he finished 11th place last year, one podium, but zero wins. But he's sort of another driver that's come into his own. He's got some experience. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess probably his knowledge of the car and stuff will help the team to, to balance it out. And uh, Esteban Gutierrez... Which kind of like Kevin Magnuson, he drove in 2014, didn't do too well, and sat the year out, kind of like K-Mag, which is right. extremely rare enough one to sit a year out and make it back. He did it, though, but I think he's also got some Mexican money behind him. I'm not some 100%, pesos. but I, yeah, sorry. Some pesos behind him. <laughs> some lots of pesos. One of the richest men in the world. Jesus. He's... Uh, Anyways, two Mexican drivers. They're looking to do extremely well this year, I'm sure. And uh, I don't think a lot of people disagree that with their statements that they're probably going to be near the top of the midfield straight out of the box. That's what they're expecting. We looked at them closer maybe two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. They've got their their trucks ready, their transportation, their toolboxes. They're ready to their go. They're trackside machines. Yeah, they got their team. They got their uniforms. They got some mock-ups of their livery, possible black and gold. Ooh. It's almost like... Uh, Is that a Bud? That's the, this can't be real. Yeah, Budweiser. Texaco Gas they're sponsored by. Wait, is this... See, yeah, we don't know. We don't know. Are they just making shit just up? For the, yeah, just for the people watching. There's been some sort of leaked Haas liveries. And they've sort of released themselves some shadowy pictures of the car. Uh, but a lot of people guessing they're going to be almost like the opposite of last year's Lotus in black and gold. In- right. Ex- okay. Instead, gold and black. Right. Mainly gold right, with right, the black. Right. But I don't know. Maybe maybe Renault's waiting. Or the red tail wing, yeah. I guess, uh, for symbolizing the Ferrari power. But for as far as deliveries, nobody really knows. Yeah. No, nothing has been... We can only speculate. We can only speculate for the next two weeks or so. It's really not that long. What's the, Today's the ninth. So, yeah, practices in two weeks. We really have less than two weeks. We're going to have all the cars, except for the Sauber. Mm-hmm. They're, they're the only team that said their new car will actually not be at the first test. They're going to forego it, miss it, skip it. Oh, we haven't talked about Sauber yet, have we? Uh no, but we don't really need to. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nor want to. That's fine. Yeah, I think they're right at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. They did not do well last year. They're actually the reason one of our podcast episodes has been pulled from YouTube for copyright violation. Oh yeah. Stupid We're trying to help you guys stoppers. out. Yeah, we we the story is we showed their commercial. Remember? Yeah, I it did. was not a very good commercial. <laughs> Basically, they showed the uh, Sauber F1 car drive a lap around Barcelona. Yeah. And then a close-up of a seagull or something and takes a shit on the car. <laughs> yeah. And then they had like 10 girls in bikinis come out and wash the bird shit off. <laughs> we I'm showed that. We were making fun of it. <laughs> yeah. We made fun of it and showed that commercial like in the background. They pulled our entire podcast episode from YouTube for that 30-second violation if you want to call oh, it that so brutal. they're not even going to be how do they find it let's come on get out of here automatically uh, robot robots anyways they're powered by ferrari as well i believe they'll be driven powered by the 2015 ferrari felipe nazar whose name sounds way too much like felipe massa uh, that was like one of the things that confused me the most when i first started Watching F1 with you guys. Especially with the British yeah. commentators. <laughs> yeah, they the sing British Felipe guys. Massa and Felipe Nasa. <laughs> yeah. You could tell mo- most of the commentators, they've gotten really careful about pronouncing the R. Yeah. Really pronouncing it as yeah. Nazar. Nazar. Nazar, not Nasa. <laughs> it's, it sounds a lot, a lot the same. And uh, Marcus Erickson. 
again, unfortunately for these two guys, you don't hear a lot about them through the year. You don't see them on TV a lot. You don't see their their team. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Interestingly, another team with a female team principal, which is awesome for them, mm-hmm. Monisha Kaltenborn. But they had some bad news. They got remember they got sued at the start of last year because oh, they yeah. dropped the driver, didn't want to pay him, caused the big stink. They're not even showing up to the, <laughs> yeah, not showing up to the first practice. Who knows if they'll even make it to the second one with their new car? Jeez. I don't know, man. But a lot of stuff is up in the air. A lot of shuffling around. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Uh, I guess finally McLaren Honda. Yeah, the Mac Honda. Yeah, the Mac Honda. As Jay would like to say. <laughs> well, they deserve 2013 with the uh, with Ferrari. Again, one of the highest paid drivers, but the car didn't perform this year. Yeah, there is talk. And now that's because of the turbo. What was what was mostly? The big... Let again. Let's get right. let's get to the details when we talk about the engine. But okay. yeah, they basically undersized their turbocharger and couldn't get enough electrical power out of it mm. <clears throat> to keep up with the, the rest of the field but the size zero concept the smaller engine they did build seemed to work they got the the coke bottle shape on the car mm-hmm. um but two of the best drivers in the grid at separate points during the year there was talk of jensen button retiring from the sport completely wow or perhaps but probably not retiring from racing, but F1 moving into endurance championship, WEC racing, something like that. Yeah. And there was also talk of Alonso for this year taking some sort of a sabbatical, mm-hmm. which sort of messed with K-Mag's head a little bit too yeah. because he was the reserve driver there. Right. He thought he might be getting a seat. But I guess in the end, I don't know, Alonso's idea was to step back, let one of the younger drivers help develop the car for a year and mm-hmm. come back in 2017 with the new rules with the engine hopefully figured out yeah they had a couple engines blow up remember the twitter oh, yeah. pages <laughs> the, the named <laughs> their what would you call them uh anthropomorphized engines yeah they're yeah. like little All people the, they had like personalities and yeah. everything anyways honda used probably close to double or maybe actually more than double their allotted engines for the year took a shit load of penalties yeah didn't do anything really zero wins zero podiums for the year only a handful of points for the year didn't finish a lot of races didn't qualify no q3s but they're and uh something else that was yasuhisha arai the the honda engine had there's so many uh, titles it's ridiculous (laughs) But he sort of stopped talking to the media about halfway through the year because there was too much. Yeah, he's just like, no. Yeah, he, he's, he talked them up too much, promised right. too much, expected right. wins before the end of the year. None of that happened. McLaren themselves, not happy with the performance of the engine. But unlike Red Bull, they were polite, didn't talk shit throughout mm-hmm. the year. I don't know. I got high hopes for them, though, coming back, possibly with a different livery, some new sponsors. Shandong. Shandon, oh, we got the bottle here the too. Bottle up here. They showed up, showed up to practice with the Shandon logo. We thought, remember, we talked about that yep. is that is one of their big sponsors this year. This is the champagne, but strangely, alcohol advertising is illegal in France, where they did the water, the wet tire testing. Weird. Yeah, so they had. Remember, they had that moon and stars on the side of the car. Oh yeah. But, oh, that's right. But yeah. they showed up with an almost all black car, so I don't know. But they've been promising since last year. They're looking for a new title sponsor. They think it's going to show up. Mm-hmm. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I don't know. <laughs> Any, anything else? Oh, I think that's it. All right, let's talk about some engines. Okay. <laughs> 